If you've been watching my videos for a while now, you probably remember that I bought the MacBook Pro M3 last year. And honestly, it's been my maiden laptop ever since. But since the MacBook Pro M4 has launched a few months ago, I was really curious, like how different it is uh, compared to my M3 MacBook Pro, uh, which I already own. Uh, I was really curious how the space black is gonna look in front of silver. It is such a pretty color, I really like it. I didn't know I'm gonna like it, but it looks completely different in every lighting. Since I have this laptop from the past two weeks, I was using for literally everything, like editing, scripting, browsing, even just watching content. And yeah, I got a lot of stories and opinion to share. Uh, was actually better, but feels the same, and where Apple might be overhyping things a bit. And this video is going to be my personal experience, like how do I feel about this new laptop, and anyone can watch it, like people who are coming from M1 MacBook Pro to this new one, or someone wanna switch from previous gen like me, M3 MacBook Pro to this new one. Now let's talk about the design and the build first, because that's the first thing we notice. At first glance, M4 MacBook Pro and M3 MacBook Pro, they almost look identical, uh, the overall design is classic Apple, that same solid aluminum unibody, clean edges and a premium finish that just feels super high-end. Even though it's the same design we've seen for a while, it still looks modern and professional. Now the color options are still the same this year, silver and the space black. Uh, since I had the silver M3 MacBook Pro, I decided to switch things up and pick up the space black version this time. And I got to say, it looks amazing. It's deep, stealthy, and has this bold matte finish that just gives a completely different vibe compared to silver. But keep in mind, the space black, it does catch fingerprints a little more than the silver. So if you're someone who's planning to buy the space black, or if you're someone who has the space black already, uh, just buy a cleaning kit from the Amazon. Right now, there's a lot of sale going on on the Amazon, so you can easily find a really better deal. I bought one last year. It's still going on, so yeah, you can easily keep your laptop clean. I have this habit to keep my laptops clean, so I use that kit just to clean my laptop before I sleep. It's a pretty good habit to keep your laptops clean. If you don't want to spend money on the cleaning kit, that's fine, uh, it's, but it's really cheap. Uh, don't keep your laptops dirty. They're really expensive laptops. M3 MacBook Pro, it doesn't move when I open it up, but M4 MacBook Pro it does move when I open it up. And I think it happens because M4 MacBook Pro is a little lighter than the M3 MacBook Pro. But yeah, if you try to open it up with your one hand, it doesn't stay on one place. It does lose the balance. So, so keep in mind if you're sitting on a desk or sitting in the kitchen, just try to open with both hands so it doesn't drop. And when you put them side by side, they do look exactly the same. If you don't tell someone that you have M4 MacBook Pro or the M3 MacBook Pro, I don't think anyone can tell the difference. Uh, the ports, speakers, and the overall layout are like basically like unchanged. But I think that's honestly fine. M3 design was already close to perfect, and this just feels slightly more refined version of it. Now let's talk about something that you guys are gonna be using it more than anything on the laptop, that's uh, the keyboard and the trackpad. Uh, I actually have mixed feelings for it. I know there are a lot of people who are a fan of MacBook's keyboards. I'm not a huge fan of it because it's really hard to type for long sessions like so if you're more into like scripting video editing photo editing then you will notice like it just gets tiring and it but if <clears throat> if you guys have watched my asus laptop video i mentioned that i don't like uh, the macbook's keyboards a lot because it's really hard to write the scripts and use for long editing sessions because it's really really hard to move your hand around it just gets hard and that's why i just use my uh, mechanical keyboard I bought from the Amazon. Actually, not from the Amazon, from the shop. Uh, that was just a $20 keyboard. Someone actually asked me uh, what's the brand of that keyboard. It's called Red and it uh, cost me $20. I bought it over five years ago and it's working still great. It's a mechanical keyboard. So yeah, if you're more into editing or like video stuff uh, like me, then yeah, I think you should invest in some external keyboard because you might not gonna like the keyboard much for long period of time because but if you're just using it for for school projects or something like your personal stuff then it's completely fine but yeah for professional stuff you probably gonna be needing the external keyboard i would say the keyboard experience is pretty much same on m3 macbook pro and m4 macbook pro because it has a similar uh, key travel experience 
But yeah, if you're looking for something more professional, just buy one external keyboard. Now the trackpad, that's a completely different story. It's huge, uh, it's precise, and probably the best you will find on any laptop. Like the clicks feels consistent across the surface, thanks to that haptic feedback system. Gestures like pinch to zoom or swiping between the apps are very smooth. So yeah, for me, the trackpad is amazing, but the keyboard, I'm not amazed. It's like pretty much the same experience like M3 MacBook Pro. Both M3 and M4 MacBook Pro use Apple Silicon Retina display, so you're getting those deep blacks and crazy contrast, super rich colors either way. But the big change is the brightness. So M3 MacBook Pro has 600 ms of SDR brightness, which is fine indoors, but the M4 MacBook Pro bumps up to 1000 ms of SDR, so trust me, that's a big deal if you're working in a brighter environment for the color grading. To be honest, 600 nits of brightness is more than enough because I think that's what most of the people use it. But now we have the option for 1000 nits of brightness. It's actually built for the people who like to spend more time outdoors. So if you like to sitting in the parks or if you like to add your photos in the park or like sitting outside in the cafes or some stuff, then yeah, 1000 nits of brightness, that's gonna be a lot. And uh, yeah, the M3 MacBook Pro has 600 nits of brightness. I haven't seen any problem with 600 nits of brightness. Like I usually go in the cafes and added my photos of the videos. But yeah, uh, if we have the option for 1000 in some brightness, I think it can be really handy in the summers because when we have like harsh sunlight and if you like to sit in the park, I think it can be really helpful. Everything just pop more uh, when you're watching content, editing photos or just browsing. And yes, both laptops still sports ProMotion, so you're getting that smooth 120 hertz of adaptive refresh rate. Uh, it's one of those things you stop noticing until you go back to regular 60 hertz of a screen. If you're someone who works a lot like visuals or just like bright, crisp screen, I think this upgrade actually makes a difference. But yeah, to be honest, I have this M3 MacBook Pro from the last year. I haven't had any problem like with 600 nits of brightness. I usually go in the cafes to edit my photos or the videos and sometimes edit my videos too. Uh, I think 600 nits of brightness is a lot uh, for people like me or like I think in general that's what we use in every use. I actually tested out like both laptops side by side just to check the display like how do they look. Uh, they look exactly the same. There's not much of a difference in the display. Uh, they both are beautiful. They look incredible uh yeah so i mean unless you are going 1000 str and str brightness you won't see any difference in the displays both are gorgeous they look incredible they both are beautiful screens so yeah if you like to watch content if you like to watch movies uh you're gonna love the displays of both doesn't matter if you own m3 mac pro or m4 macbook pro like to be honest whenever you buy any new product like doesn't matter if it's a phone or uh or a laptop or like a computer if you're switching from previous gen to the new one, I don't think you can notice like much of a difference in terms of performance because none of the companies make huge changes in terms of performance. But if you're someone who's coming from M1, like let's say for the laptops, to M4 Pro, uh, then of course you will see a lot of difference. But for myself now, we're talking for M3 MacBook Pro and for M4 MacBook Pro. So I have base M3 MacBook Pro uh, with 12 cores of CPU, 20 cores of GPU, and with 18 gigs of unified memory. The M4 MacBook Pros, we have 14 cores of CPU and 20 cores of GPU with 24 gigs of unified memory. So with the base model, like I have base model for M3 MacBook Pro and I have the base model for M4 MacBook Pro. So the base model, it comes up with 24 gigs of unified memory. That's a good jump. And I think we can really take the help of it because if you like to work with 3D stuff like in After Effects or like in Blender, then I think you can really take the help of extra uh, gigs of RAM. Base M3 MacBook Pro and the base M4 MacBook Pro has same uh, SSD storage, so 512 gigs of storage. Uh, I always tell people if they want to upgrade their storage, don't go with the Apple option because they are really expensive. Uh, you can easily buy one Samsung SSD this video is not sponsored by Samsung, but yeah, I hope it will be in the future. But so yeah, I mean, if you compare them on the paper, I mean, it does look as a huge jump, but like, to be honest, I don't care about these specs on the papers. I always trust uh, on the test, like how do they perform? We're gonna use the Premiere Pro and I will explore the same video in both of these laptops. And we can see like how big is the difference.
From the last two weeks, I also been testing out Photoshop and the Lightroom on the M4 MacBook Pro. And honestly, it's been a really smooth experience. Like everything just feels more faster and more responsive, like opening large RAW files and applying filters or even moving between layers and in Photoshop. It's all super quick. In Lightroom, previous load instantly. So I can scroll through hundreds of photos without any lag. Uh, if you compare this performance with the M3 MacBook Pro, the difference isn't massive, but it's definitely noticeable. Uh, the app for feels a little bit more refined. So yeah, if you're someone who edits daily photos like me, you will appreciate how consistent the performance is. For MacBook Pro just makes that creative workflow a bit more effortless. My M3 Mac Pro used to give me like a lot of heating issues, but like, yeah, after a few months it stopped giving heating issues. Now it doesn't heat at all. But M3 MacBook Pro handles heating like really well. It doesn't heat at all. And I also noticed about the fans too. So if you put so much heavy stuff in these two laptops, you will feel less noise of the fans in the MacBook Pro. The M4 MacBook Pro, it's like really quiet. So even if the fans are on, you can't hear them. Like they're really, really quiet. Um, you can definitely hear M3 MacBook Pro fans. Like when you put too much stuff, you're doing multitasking. Yeah, you can definitely hear them. Uh, I mean, it's not an issue for me. Like I don't go to libraries, but that extra GP power in M4 MacBook Pro makes a huge difference in the creative apps. So like the rendering timelines, color grading, so working with motion graphics feels snappier. Especially if you're used to waiting on effects to load or play back to smooth out. Uh, that 24 gigs of unified memory, huge plus. Like it really helps when you're juggling heavy workloads. M4 handles it all without breaking a sweat. To be honest, I never had any problem with the performance of M3 MacBook Pro. I have this laptop from the last one year and I never had any problem with exporting times, like rendering times. So yeah, the M3 is still capable, but M4 feels like a little bit more responsive and a little bit more faster. I won't say like M3 is slower, it's just, when you compare the side by side, like then you can tell the difference. But if you have M3 MacBook Pro and you never used M4 MacBook Pro, then you can never tell the difference. But yeah, since I have both of them side by side, I can tell you like, yes, M4 is a little bit more smoother and a little bit more faster and it handle uh, the multitasking really well. So if you're someone who's more into 3D stuff, I would recommend to go for M4 MacBook Pro. Uh, don't even think about M3 MacBook Pro. Now let's talk about the portability because some people use the MacBook Pros for the office stuff and some people use it. Some students like to buy them and sometimes people like to travel a lot. So yeah, portability, it really matters. Uh, to be honest, this one is 16 inch. I don't recommend to anyone to go for 16 or the 15 inch laptops if you like to travel a lot. But if you're a student, if you're just using for school or for office, uh, go for 16, you're not gonna regret it. Uh, the M4 MacBook Pro is like really lightweight. I have a, a M3 MacBook Pro. This one is like a tank. For someone who's looking for a good performance laptop, buy the 14 inch model if you travel a lot. So I really like the M4 MacBook Pro better than the M3 MacBook Pro. This thing is like a tank. You can't walking around in the city and carrying this laptop. It's not good for the travel. I also tested out the AirDrop and the Apple ecosystem just because this is something I use constantly. Uh, thanks to Wi-Fi 7 and W2SLE, AirDrop on the MacBook Pro feels noticeable faster and more reliable. Uh, when I finish editing photo or the video, I can just right click, hit AirDrop and it's right on my iPhone 17 Pro Max in a second. Uh, the content across both of your iPhone and the MacBook uh, this workflow is chef kits. Like it just makes everything super seamless. I don't do this type of test like regularly. It's just like I have iPhone 17 Pro Max and just wanted to see how does it work in the Apple ecosystem. M3 MacBook Pro like has some issues with the airdrop. I don't know why. Like sometimes I can't see my device in the laptop and sometimes like I get photo like a little late or sometimes I send the photo, I don't receive it. Uh, with the M4 MacBook Pro, MacBook Pro is super seamless. I receive photos like within seconds, the tiny details. It makes the whole experience like more enjoyable. I really like the stuff who works accordingly, like it doesn't lag. So yeah, I mean, sometimes when you spend so much money, it's supposed to work this. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed with the performance of AirDrop. It works really, really good. All right, now let's talk about the battery life of M4 MacBook Pro and M3 MacBook Pro. So the battery lives are always subjective because it depends how are you using it. It doesn't matter like what companies are telling us in the events or what they're declaring on their websites. 
Uh, I'm gonna tell you guys my experience. How do I feel about the M4 MacBook Pro and the M3 MacBook Pro? I mainly use my laptops for photo editing, video editing, and just some personal stuff, um, but mainly for photo and the video editing. I don't do 3D stuff a lot. So yeah, if you're using for video edits, uh, the M3 MacBook Pro, it goes around six to seven hours for video editing in the Premiere Pro. Uh, with M4 MacBook Pro, it stays around nine to 10 hours uh, if you're editing in Premiere Pro. It might can be different if you're editing in DaVinci or in the After Effects. It, dep it depends what kind of software you're using. So for me, Premiere Pro and the Photoshop in M3 MacBook Pro, six to seven hours. M4 MacBook Pro for Photoshop and the Premiere and sometimes the After Effects, nine to 10 hours. Uh, for the battery, pretty impressed with M4 MacBook Pro. Uh, MacBook Pro M4, it works around 14 hours. It works really, really good. If I'm not editing the videos, if I'm just editing photos plus scripting. Uh, M3 MacBook Pro, yeah, this one is just for eight to nine hours. Uh, for scripting and for the for edits. So yeah, that's where you can see a lot of difference. All right, now if you guys ask me which one is worth it because M3 MacBook Pro is going to be in a really good price because this one is year old, you can find really good deals. Uh, some people are even selling on the Facebook marketplace as well. So find a really cheap option in the M3 MacBook Pro, go for it, it's such a good machine. But if you are more into 3D stuff, if you like to edit in Blender or like to do heavy stuff, go for M3 MacBook Pro. Uh, it has 24 gigs of unified memory, so that really helps a lot. Both of these laptops are like pretty much similar because M3 MacBook Pro was on similar price, $3,299 in Canada for the base model, same for M4 MacBook Pro. So they haven't changed the price, it's just the changes in CPUs and the GPU's course performance and uh, with the unified memory. I think you should go for M3 MacBook Pro because you can find a really good deal and it has the similar performance like almost a similar performance like m4 macbook pro but if you're more into animations if you, you want to use after effects a lot or want to use the blender more then you should go for m4 macbook pro it does good a really good job with the multitasking that's what i think about these two laptops uh, but if you guys still have any questions you can let me know and you can send me the text on the insta as well I will reply your text. But yeah, that's it for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.